In the 1960s, when my grandfather was teaching me to drive on his little red Ford Falcon, there was an epidemic of deaths on the highways in the United States, and young people were dying in very large numbers. And this country said, we can't let this happen. We're going to stop it. And they took $200 million and said, we're going to invest in research for how to stop young people from losing their lives on the highway. And they did an amazing, amazing thing. The research that they supported, and they started the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, that research led to redesigning cars completely. My grandfather's little Ford Falcon had an engine block that if we hit something front on, it would come into the passenger compartment and crush me like an anvil. It had a steering column that could go through my chest. It didn't have the protection that we have, and they redesigned the car totally based on research so that the steering column collapses. The front end of the cars we drive today crush like an accordion to protect us. We have side impact protection, rollover protection, airbags, side airbags, knee airbags, head airbags, and seat belts and elevated rear stoplights. We totally redesigned the car. We redesigned the roads. We learned that there are dangers in designing roads that are straight and flat and wide and that if you design a road built like an airport runway, people will drive like they're trying to take off. And we redesigned the roads. We built curves into them. We put speed bumps in our residential neighborhoods. We're starting to change from red lights to traffic circles, but we're redesigning the roads and we're redesigning the drivers. We've gotten drunk drivers to a huge extent off the road, sleepy and impaired drivers off the road, and now if we can get distracted, texting drivers off the road, we'll redesign the driver. But what we did in the 60s, redesigning the car, redesigning the roadway, redesigning the drivers, was a result of scientific research. And as a result, we have saved between the 60s and the beginning of this century, 325,000 lives. That's the result of science. We can apply the same science to firearm injuries and deaths of children. And it's not rocket science. We want to answer four questions. What's the problem? Who gets shot where, why, when, how? Under what circumstances, with what types of weapons? So what's the problem? What are the causes? What protects you or puts you at greater risk is part of what are the causes, what works to prevent it, and once you have something that works, how do you do it? Those are the four questions, and if we can answer them, we can do for gun violence what we did in the fields of cancer, in the field of smoking, in the field of road safety. We've brought the death rates way down, and science can lead us out of this problem too.